What is your most infuriating soccer mom story you know? I used to live by a few soccer fields that always had games on the weekends. On multiple occasions people parked their car in front of my driveway completely blocking it. I called the non-emergency police number multiple times but they only did anything about a third of the time. Once the people left their car windows open so I decided it was a perfect time to take the sprinkler out and water the grass. Women in my parents neighborhood would pay to have background checks done on other people in the community just to dig up dirt have something to gossip about. I'd be playing soccer and my mom would cheer. Mommy wants a goal every 2-3 minutes. How annoying and embarrassing is that? At least it wasn't mommy wants to score. Talk about awkward. I'm hostess in a restaurant that is pretty popular and is often packed and has a wait list. Anyway, one day at work this family of soccer mom, dad, and three little monsters in their soccer gear walk in. I explained to them that we on wait at the moment. It shouldn't be any longer than 15 minutes and that I can put them on the list if they'd like. The mom looks pretty peeved, but says yeah put me on the list and I do. Anyway, less than 5 minutes later she walks up, says that her family is in such a hurry and asks to be moved to first on the list. I ask my manager just to appease the mom, even though I know he'll say no because it's against our policy and we have other customers to think of. So while they're waiting, the kids are horrendous and start knocking chairs over, being extremely loud and stealing pens from my desk. I politely ask them to please return my pens, as I needed them, and next thing I know Psycho Mom is screaming at me for daring to speak to her children that way and telling me that her children would never steal. I pointed out that the pens are right there in their hands and she just kind of ignores me and tells me to leave her children alone. I don't want my manager involved again so I just drop it and borrow a pen. Anyway, our restaurant is set up kind of like cafeteria and all the tables can be seen from our wait area and around this time another group left their table. Before the table can even be cleaned or I can seat the next group on the list. The moment her family strut past me and sit down at the table, as the family was extremely obnoxious, the other people on the list know exactly when they walked in and are very angry that they just got a table. Anyway, I tell my manager what they just did and that other customers are angry and he walks over to inform them that he's very sorry, but they must leave the table so the next group on the list can be sat. Well the mom loses it and says that it's ridiculous that they should have to wait, cause they're so important, I guess, and that we'll be sorry we kicked her family out because they're well off and will spend more money than anyone else on that stupid list will. TL. DR. Crazy mom walks in, yells at me for daring to ask for my pens that her kids stole, and then proceeds to steal a table from people on the list in front of her and calls them poor. So I took the title quite literally. I was a soccer referee for about 8 years ref ages 12 men's beer leagues, and at that time I had a lot of crazy crap happen during games. While this isn't the craziest story, it's the only one involving moms. This was a new 16 game, so there were 14 and 15 year old guys playing. Let's call the teams red and blue. It was a championship game. So the guys were playing pretty intensely, and there were a number of cautions, yellow cards, given. There were 5 minutes left and the score was tied 1-1. A blue player had a great chance at the goal, and the red keeper was out of position. Just before the ball went into the net, a red player reached out his hand and swatted the ball down. This is an automatic red card, ejection, and a penalty kick. As I showed him the red card, he took it gracefully and left to grab his kit bag. However, one woman in the crowd, his mom, began yelling at me quite obnoxiously. Unless there's cursing or something more extreme, refs can't really kick a fan out, they are just a spectator. So I tried to ignore her. Now, when a red card is given, the player must leave the field entirely, not just go sit in the stands. So I wait to restart play with the penalty kick until the player has left. What I didn't notice, was that the kid's mom had not left. So I place the ball down, and turn my back to address the kicker. He suddenly points behind me, and as I turn, the ball hits me in the chest. The insane woman is standing there, eyes blazing with anger, cursing and shouting about how I mistreated her boy. I was stunned, and really wanted to pick the ball up basher in the face with it. However that's looked down upon by the ref association. Unfortunately for her, one of the spectators was a cop who promptly came down and restrained her. 
He then called one of his on-duty buddies to come and take her away. The only other part of the story that was memorable was the kid who got ejected. He came up to me after the game and apologized for his stepmom. My actual mom was a lot cooler. Wow his comment about his old mom was depressing as heck. When I was 16, I was umpiring the championship game of the baseball league for 9 10 year olds in my city with a friend of mine. The team in the field is up by one in the last inning and there are two outs with the bases loaded. Parents are screaming in excitement. The batter smacks a line drive that falls in front of the right fielder. The runner on third scored easily and the runner that was on second is trying to score as well. The throw from the right fielder is way off but there's one problem. The kid never touched home plate. He stepped right over it. So while the team that thinks they just won is celebrating the catcher picks the ball up and tags the runner who missed home plate. I called him out. The parents went crazy. Cursing at me at the top of their lungs in front of their kids. It was pretty terrible. Turns out one of the parents was recording the game and between innings he showed me what he had recorded. I was right. The kid was never even close to touching the plate. He showed the video to the rest of the parents and a few of the people slipped me some extra money after the game for treating me so poorly. However, one parent did confront me in the parking lot and tried to fight me until he was dragged away by his wife. TL. DR. 9 10 year old baseball is serious business. Throw away because I still work with kids and parents are crazy. I was almost fired from a job in the burbs working with an after school program because I told a group of 6th graders they were acting like jerks. I've always been good with kids, but this group was the absolute worst bunch of hellions I've ever interacted with. They broke our supplies on purpose, refused to listen to me, and locked me in a closet one day when I went to get them some stuff for the playground. A mom complained to the director of the program about my comment, which admittedly, I shouldn't have said, but there are a lot worse words I could have said, and I ended up barely keeping my job after pleading with my boss. She said those kinds of words were detrimental to her child's development. I also did summer camps with this same organization. We had drive through drop off for parents who couldn't bother getting their kids out of their SUVs to drop them off in the morning. We would stand on the curb, open the door for the kids, get their backpacks on and whatnot and have the parents sign them out on a clipboard. Half the time the parents were on their cell phones and got annoyed when you tried to speak to them. No big deal. I know you're super important. I'm just the lowly grunt in charge of your child all day. I now work with kids in the ghetto and you couldn't pay me enough to go back to the suburbs. The urge to write to the suburban parents must be terrible. Mom, I just want you to know that I prefer risking getting shot by gangbangers than deal with you or the crotch droppings you call your children. I'm a little league umpire so I have plenty of soccer mom and dad stories. Once a coach called a kid on the other team of F. I was only 20 feet away so I said to him sir, you're ejected, you can wait in the parking lot for the game to finish. Ejecting him for vulgar language towards a kid was totally within our league's policy. He started yelling at me and threatened to kick my butt luckily some parents came onto the field and helped me calm him down. But as he was walking out he kicked my bike over. Another time I was the behind the play hump and a kid who looked totally normal, came up to bat. The pitcher threw a ball right down the middle so I called it a strike. And the kid said, no that was a ball in a bratty way. Eventually I called strike 3 because he didn't swing at any pitches and they were all right down the middle. Instead of going to the dugout he starts screaming at me and saying that I'm wrong and none of them were strikes. I tell him to go to the dugout, at this point he becomes enraged and throws his bat at my head. It smashed into my face mask but it probably would have broken my nose if I wasn't wearing one. I then ejected him. Then this whale woman comes onto the field and starts yelling at me for discriminating against her son. She said something along the lines of my son has special needs and he's the only one on his team who hasn't gotten on base. And I tell her that he hasn't gotten on base because he never swings at anything. Rather than listen to me she calls me a miserable piece of crap. And I just smiled at her then ejected her from the field. I also reported her to the league office and they banned her from coming to all games. I have other stories too. If there's any interest. In the interest of the thread. Please do. My girlfriend is from a very well-to-do area in Connecticut. There are a few public middle schools for different areas in the town. Some richer than others. For some reason they needed to combine a couple of the schools and held a town hall type meeting on it. One of the moms stood up in the meeting, 
outraged, and said, I will not have my children going to school with children whose mothers work, it's a nice place. Ro. I work as a lifeguard, one time we had an awful family from Massachusetts come to the water park. The prissy mom would glare at us whenever we told her 4 year old son to stop running, and then she would grab him and hold him close to her. It was weird, she would hold on to him like he just woke up from a nightmare or something, and tell him not to listen to the mean people, us. Then her and her husband got extremely drunk on liquor that they snuck in, and she started screaming at my supervisor for telling her kids to follow the rules, and was threatening to have my supervisor fired. She actually did try to get my supervisor fired the next day, but it didn't work. She did get a 100% refund though. Ah. Yeah. Soccer moms in my community formed a coalition to block construction on a new road leading to our neighborhood. They feared that such a road would enable the school board to zone children from poorer areas into neighborhood schools. They wanted to keep out the riffraff. Their successful lobbying efforts have ensured that there is only one two mile road leaving our neighborhood of several thousand single family homes. The morning commute is wonderful. When I was around 10 I was in my class ice hockey team. Now, I wasn't a small kid. In fact I was fat and clumsy. I didn't like hockey. I just wanted to be one of the cool kids and wanted approval from my mom and stepdad. He pushed me into it. Anyhow, one of our games wasn't going well and we eventually lost. During the game, I completely missed a shot due to my nervousness. One of these crazy moms watching the game actually shouted at me fat crap. I felt great. After the game was somewhat worse, the same mom comes up to me in a corner and tells me she will cut me if I ever play for the team again. Later on after the game I heard her talking to other moms about how the fat kid shouldn't play. He is useless and a liability and should be taken out of the team due to safety reasons because he could crush the other kids. Needless to say I didn't go back. I metaphorically kept my mouth shut and ate more food. The mom apparently was bipolar. She killed herself when her husband left her. But her son is an awesome person and a friend of mine. TL. DR. Childhood Finnish hockey doesn't favor fat kids. Mom who gave me death threat eventually killed herself years later. That, UHH. Wow. I had the chance for a trial session at LD Alagilance, a professional soccer club in Costa Rica, when I was 9. She refused to let me live there with my uncle for the summer because she feared it would give me high hopes of being a professional athlete in a third world country. I love my mother, but whenever I watch a match now I can't help but wonder the what ifs. It kills me. That story involves both soccer and your mother. I wasn't expecting that. I coach Little League with one of my oldest friends in the world. Neither one of us have kids as I am 26 and he is 25. But we just love baseball and love coaching. Well this year we were lucky enough to get a few kids whose parents just happened to think they were the next Roger Clemens, Randy Johnson, Nolan Ryan. Every single game practice there were comments and questions about whether or not they can pitch that day or practice. It went as far as if we were busy. The parents would sit on the team bench staring at us to try to get to our attention. One day one of the mothers asked us if it was her son's turn to pitch. And when we replied we had three other kids pitching that day, she grabbed her kid and left in the second inning of the game. But we had to play that game with just 8 kids because of that entitled parent. A mom waiting to pick up her kid from my high school got hit through her open car door with a snowball that some seniors were throwing around one day. Obviously this was crappy for her and it was understandable that she got out and started yelling at the kids. What was not understandable was the part where she was approached and asked to move by the owner of the car she was parked in front of. She began screaming at him then went to her trunk to threaten him with her tire iron and hit him in the face with pepper spray. I believe she was arrested and put in a mandatory anger management program. I feel like this is the story of a mom who just had enough. My town is really small, like, my graduating class was 34 people kind of small. Anyway, needless to say, our town doesn't even have a red light because there is only one major intersection. Instead it had a three-way stop. They decided, since there had been more than a few accidents there, to make it a four-way stop. The busybodies lunged at the opportunity and declared war on the new stop sign. 
They said the buses would need to stop more and that would wear on the brakes and cause the busful of their precious babies to get in some sort of fatal accident. Then when that didn't work they just repeatedly stole the sign until the authorities were called. Now half of them just run the stop sign out of spite. That is so hilariously childish. I was pitching in a baseball game when I was 8, and I struck out this kid. His mom had been up in the bleachers yelling the whole time like crazy. He threw quite the tantrum, but that was unfortunately fairly normal for our game so they just made him sit down. At the end of the inning, I was walking over to the bench when the mom came up to the fence and started rattling it. She started screaming at me for purposely striking him out. Um, dun. She said she was going to kill me. I just kinda froze and her husband pulled her away. Last I heard she's in jail, but the kid was valedictorian of his school, so he turned out alright in the end. 8 year olds dude. When I was around 15 my parents and I moved in with my grandparent. They were very sick so we had caregivers watching them 24 hours a day. 4 different workers with 6 hour shifts. One of them was a younger black nursing student. Really cool guy who worked the graveyard shift so he could study while he worked. At least once a week for the 2 years he worked for us he'd get pulled over by the cops in the neighborhood because some soccer mom down the street would report him driving by every night around the same time. My dad would have to get up every night and go explain to the cops why he was here. He even went and talked to her about it but she kept saying she was trying to protect the community. Hated that be. Sounds like the police needed to do something about someone deliberately wasting public resources. I work at a deli in an uppity, suburban PA area and I hear the most asinine things from people over freaking lunch meat. Last week, a co-worker was helping a customer and she orders a pound of cheese and says, word for word make sure that is really thin. Last time I was here you people didn't slice it thin enough and I had to throw the whole thing away. One day I will snap and become a middle class punisher and make these people pay. Please do this. I will make you a costume and pack you a lunch if you promise to do this. There are crazy swimmer moms too. In high school here in NJ, I believe it was my sophomore year, and my team and I were at our state's meet. I by no means am the fastest thing to ever have gotten wet, but I hold my own in the water. I had never swam a 200 meter freestyle before, as I usually sprinted, 50m and 100m. It was my turn to step up, and I was skilled enough to not only win, but place in the final seed for the meet, which gained my school enough points to win the meet. Anyway, after my swim, and the congratulatory handshake to the surrounding swimmers, I got out, put my leg back on and walked over to my team when all of a sudden some kid's mom grabs me and demands to have me admit to steroid abuse because, and I quote, no kid missing a leg could beat my son. Bulls, I looked her square in the eyes and said, I'm sorry mom, but if your son is slow enough to get beaten by a kid with one leg, then maybe he should find a new sport. TL, DR, beat kid in a swim race, crazy parent demands drug testing because no kid with one leg could outswim my boy. The fastest thing to ever have gotten wet. Great statement. It took one stroke two hour to get to my soccer games. We leave 20 minutes before the game was supposed to start. Not because she'd get home late. Not because she was still making dinner. Not because I wasn't ready, I'd be waiting around for a minimum 20 minutes ready to go. It's because she wanted to finish her show. Her show was freaking Little House on the Prairie, which had its final season. At the time, 15 years ago. God am I hated that. With a twist, I worked in a restaurant. I was a hostess. Our restaurant was a pizza place where we hand tossed the dough, and there was a window in our waiting area so kids could watch the guys toss the dough in the air, play flower tic-tac-toe, etc. while they waited for a table food. Soccer mom brought in about 5-6 mini soccer players. They were all wearing soccer uniforms, complete with muddy cleats. They all climbed onto chairs to watch the pizza guys through the window. They got mud all over the chairs. Meanwhile. Soccer mom was off talking to someone. Me. I'm watching all of them and thinking great. I get to clean up mud today. Eventually, they were seated. And I was begrudgingly going to clean up the chairs. Suddenly, though, a light seemed to go off in the mom's head. She stopped me, took the cleaning supplies from my hands, and told the kids to clean up their mess. 
I went from infuriated to delighted in a matter of minutes. Best, soccer mom, ever. Hey, you take your uplifting, positive story and get the heck out of here. We don't like your kind around here. I was sitting on the third row of an airplane and a tea soccer mom comes up to me and says, I need you to switch seats with me so I can sit with my son. He has the seat next to you. She had a middle seat in row 43 and I politely declined. She then raises her voice and says, So you want to sit next to my 13 year old son I'm a guy so the insinuation was very clear. I stood up and looked her directly in her eyes and said, No, and I don't want to sit next to an entitled bee either. The person in the back will gladly move up here if you ask them and sat back down. The person in the back moved up to the front and was happy to have a seat closer up. Frick people like this. That poor kid. He was probably in heaven. The front of the plane. 30 rows away from that mother. And you had to go and ruin it for him. I was at the local park watching my oldest play baseball several years back. I noticed three boys, ages ranging from 4 to 7, pulling giant shards of plywood off one of the backstops on another field. They were giggling with glee as each piece fell. This was no more than 30 yards from where we were sitting. Not only was it dangerous to the kids, it was ruining an already decaying structure. I walked over and told them to knock it off. They split off as fast as they could like roaches when you turn on the lights. Five minutes later mommy comes over and gets in my face screaming at me. Don't you ever talk to my kids. I will take care of them. Don't even look at my children my wife was flabbergasted as she was the one who told me to get the kids to stop it. I nonchalantly put my hand up to her face and said go away. She slapped my hand away and it was on. Now my wife is the sweetest person I have ever met in my life which is why I married her. She jumped out of her chair, handed me the baby and said I got this. I now know never to pee off my wife because a fuckton of hellish wrath and fury rained down on that bee. It was like some sort of demonic possession and she was hellbent on burying that bee in the salt flats. The verbal beatdown she gave that bee was like she was a love child made from Muhammad Ali and Malcolm X. She sat down, took the baby back and continued on like nothing happened as that bee slunk back to her side of the field. I had the weirdest boner. TL. DR. Kids damaging public property. Told them to stop. Soccer mom got in my face. My wife tore her a new butthole. I had a weird boner. Handing off the baby was the best part. My wife was a girl scout leader, and while we have no children, the town had a need, lots of girls wanted to be in it, but none of the parents would step up and lead. So we got to deal with all sorts of crap from the parents. For the first couple of years, my wife would lead the meetings on one side of the room, and the parents would sit on the other side and criticize how my wife was running the meetings. The most idiotic issue was that after a sleepover, there was a lot of leftover food, primarily fruit. My wife asked if we could leave the fruit with her and her family to eat as payment for us taking the two boxes of cereal the host bought for the event. She said fine since her family didn't eat the cereal, and the fruit would go bad before it would be eaten at our house. Plus we used the rest of the cereal at a later event. A few months later, her daughter didn't like Girl Scout anymore and dropped out of the troop. A few months after that we received a request for reimbursement for the aforementioned two boxes of cereal. Total cost something along the lines of $7. We pointed out the conversation at the event, and she didn't remember it. Even after we had multiple witnesses that recalled the conversation, the woman flew off the handle and started calling all of the parents in the troop and the local council talking about how we were stealing money from the troop. The council took our side, but we still had to deal with angry emails and phone calls from her about it for several weeks. It got to the point that at after every event we had to make an overly grand show of distributing leftover food, so no one could accuse us of stealing. The parents all knew what the score was, and a few told us that no one thought we were stealing from the troop. I ref youth soccer games for some extra cash. One game, a prominent school board member punched out another parent over a game of 7 year old soccer. He's a man, so not technically a soccer mom. But I believe his behavior merits special recognition. He got re-elected earlier this month as well. Being a painfully suburban, white male, I have a few stories in this genre. Here are two that stick out. In elementary school, I was friends with a physically disabled kid in my class. We hung out in and out of school like many other kids. 
His mom was, somewhat understandably, a bit overprotective. She would often stop in on the classroom during the school day and check up on her son. One day, after leaving the library, she confronted me with my teacher and asked me why I shoved her son. I was flabbergasted. Since I didn't shove her kid, mainly since he used a walker to get around and we were friends but she kept at it. She asked numerous times until I ran away crying and the teacher stopped her. During a block party when I was about 8, a neighbor approached my family and I. This elderly woman asked why I picked on her granddaughter. I had only met the girl once a few days prior and barely spoke to her since all she did was stare at me. I said I hadn't picked on her and that I was sure of it. The old broad kept at it until the tears started flowing on my part. My mom, aunt, and grandmother told the woman to get out of my face and we haven't had much to do with them in the 15 years since. TL, DR, BB Trippin. What I read here was that you love to cry as a child. My stepfather once drove from Central California to Oregon to play against a low cross team there, and they had booked a field for this one morning to play. Well, when they got there, there were two girls soccer teams playing a game in the middle of the field. My stepfather talked to some people and they agreed that the girls would resume their game once they were done. Since they hadn't booked the field but instead had just started to play on it, but this one mom went up to my stepfather and said, with tears in the works, I am very disappointed in you, why won't you let them play and kept bugging him about it. Finally, she went and sat in the middle of the field in protest while one of the teams was warming up around her, and her husband kept trying to coax her off the field, but she wouldn't budge, everyone just did the drills around her. I think eventually, when the game started, she was removed, but my stepfather was appalled that she'd been driven to tears over a soccer game, especially one that they didn't even care enough about to book a field for. TL. Doctor. A soccer mom is driven to tears and intense stubbornness by the postponement of a soccer game which they did not have field rights for. I got a chance to start college early. I was invited to the program our local university had especially for bright high school students where we'd essentially go to college and get college credit, which would also count towards finishing high school. I hated high school, so not only was this an amazing opportunity, this was like a freaking helicopter out of Saigon. Nope. Denied by my mom. Her reasoning? I want you to have the full high school experience but I hate the high school experience. You want me to have another year of this you'll look back on these years fondly. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.